Okay, today I'm starting to make a violin bow. Thanks to my friend Virgil Shells, who brought me some nice wood, blanks, and uh, ones that he started and didn't finish. So, so far, let me show you what you, we start with this piece of chunk of wood here. This I can make four bows out of. There's a, a layout. You can make one bow here, another bow there. Cut it in half first. Then we'll flip this around, make another bow there, another bow there. It's got to be about, uh, start with about three eighths inch wide piece. About three eighths by half. Uh, almost half inch. Yeah. Anyway, this stick here, I'm trying to do it the way, uh, old fashioned way, all by hand, except there are a few little things like drilling a hole for the, the uh, pocket for the eyelet and the frog. Anyway, so far, I've used uh, the techniques that I saw from uh, J.J. Aubert, Auberger, Auberger. Nice French bow maker. Does everything by hand. So so far, all I've used is a head of stick like this. Rough cut. And you start with a plane. Plane that down. Let's do this is rough cut. So I'm just you gotta figure out which way the grain is going too. It'll work better one way than the other. Yeah, we got a little bit of sap wood on this piece. You get a slight angle, sometimes it works better than straight ahead. That was interesting, the French bow maker, JJ, <laughs> he didn't have any, uh, anything holding his bow while he was worked on it, other than his hands. He would just hold it in his hands and work on it like that. So that's what I've been doing too. I've done it for hundreds of years. And you'll see I got newspaper down to catch all the the uh, shavings. So we went from the big to plain to get it down from this to uh, closer to this. Then we use the little thumb plane to get the, uh, when I made a little jig, basically a V-block that holds the stick securely if I press down there on each facet. There's eight facets. It's a hexagon. You start with a square. Yeah, my light keeps going off. And you go to, uh, you cut the edges off and make it each side of octagon, octagonal. And then, of course, you got to make sure all your uh, knives are nice and sharp. And your uh, glasses are nice and clean. Is it, a lot of this is done just by sight. When you work on it, you look down, sight down it. As each one of these facets, as you can see, it gets smaller as it gets down there. And it looks like it's a little bit thicker here than here. So at this point, uh, very delicate. You have to be very careful how much wood you take off because it's getting pretty close. Yeah, definitely too thick right there. And you can see because the each facet will be, has to be the same thickness or width to uh, come out evenly. That one's wider. This one's skinnier. So I'm going to need to take some off of this this edge here. 
and these other blocks just to support it to keep it nice and flat. At this point, instead of using a plane, I use my uh, knife, which works the same as a plane. You can see that little curl. As long as it's nice and sharp and flat. Here is a little thin. Widen that out. And this is the straight up one at the top. So we're getting closer, we're not taking off a lot as you can see. Just trying to make them all even so we get equal thicknesses. Yeah, that looks better. It's still a little bit thick here though. And at this point we'll start using our calipers. Turn it this way so you can read them. It's got about seven. Seven, six and a half on that side, six and three quarters. Yeah, all are pretty close to seven. That one's a little thin, so we won't take any more off of those two sides. But the uh, top thickness looks like we're going to have to remove some a little bit of wood. Top or the back? I don't want to go with the back. This side here is a little needs some more work here. You're only taking off a thousandth of an inch or less, maybe a ten thousandth of an inch at a time.
You can also feel it with your fingers. You can see, feel any rough marks. You want it nice and smooth. And we'll check the other end here. Eight. Yeah, okay, that's about right. And we're using these two bows as a guide. One's uh, French. Oh, my, the uh, tip is slightly different than the German. Well, that's not the one I was got. That's what it is. Yeah, this is a German imitation of a French. So, they're both good uh, tips to cover, copy. See, I've drawn this out already here. Uh, you've got the inside part cut. This is all uh, you used a mechanical saw for to cut out the basic shape, but everything else has been knife and uh, chisels and planes. Mostly knife and plane. You can see it's a very tough, strong wood. You have to have a very sharp knife to cut cut away this excess here. And pretty soon we'll be uh, putting a tip on it and cutting the uh, mortise. Now you can see I got this knife nice and sharp. And we'll see, I uh, get the height of the tip, we're getting pretty close to that point. Uh, 23, 24, 22, yeah. Well, these have their ivory tip on them already, so yeah, that's uh, 24. So our height is pretty close to where we want it. So it's good thing I didn't cut any more. Away. Just cut the uh, does need to have a little bit of an angle here. And this wood is uh, quite colorful and will stain your fingers and shirt. I usually wear a apron if I'm doing some uh, heavy sanding and a dust mask. So at this point we're just still uh, using hand tools so we're not raising up a lot of dust. See how that blade works as a scraper. If you like uh, knives like this, this is another, another good one. Nice and sharp. But the main one I've been using is my shop knife, which I have form fit to my hand. Works really good. And, uh, but anyway, I was going to check the width down here. Yeah, it's about eight millimeters. Oh, that shows nine. Yeah. It's a thickness there. Oh, that one's eight. We do leave that a little wider down here where the frog goes so that. And we don't want to take any more wood away. So once we fit the frog, then we'll shave away the excess so it's nice and flat and flush. And as you can see, it's a little too long yet. We always like to have it too long so you can grab it down here. Put it in the vise if you need to. Cut that off after drill the, the uh, mortise and the, uh, make the nipple on the end and drill a hole. Get the tip on, then we'll be able to hair it up. So that's a 
Uh, not sure what, how many steps we got in so far, but this is the beginning part. We'll catch up with you next time and uh, see. The critical part is there you got a black piece right here, a black line. And I'm not sure if that's a, it looks like it's integral to the wood. So I don't see a, a crack. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem. We'll have to color that because uh, it doesn't feel looser. Anyway, for the first bow, it's not too critical. Thanks for watching.